We're going to talk a little bit now about transition as it relates to health. Um, the next uh, series of discussions really help us ask questions about sort of who can be helpful and who our partners are in each of these domains of living, and then what some of the questions or considerations might be. So as we think about health, um, who would we partner with? Um, so remember, and uh, you know, kids have been connected, for example, to pediatricians um, uh, up until this point. How long is a pediatrician going to continue to see that young adult? Um, and is there an endpoint to that? And should, what should we be thinking about? Uh, it, it's interesting, the Academy of Pediatrics actually recommends that transition planning begin at age 14, which to me seems really early. Um, but I think the idea is important to think about. So do, is there, should there be a change to the healthcare providers that you're interacting with, and who do you talk to about that? So obviously the young adult and their parent are important um, partners in that conversation as well as the medical professionals who are most important um, in that young adult's life. This may also be a time to start exploring uh, what adult providers might be available. You might start to get more information about who's out there and who can be helpful by talking to, for example, um, friends who maybe have older kids and ask what they did. Um, find out who uh, other family members see uh, as adult practitioners, particularly primary care. Um, so who, think about who additional supports are as you consider uh, what happens with health. So let's talk a little bit more about health transitions. This is certainly something that I was completely unaware of until I really started learning more about transition. As I said, pediatric providers don't expect to be providing, nor are they trained to provide um, health care to adults. So um, for those of you who might be seeing a family medicine provider, you don't necessarily have to have a transition in primary care because family medicine sees people of all ages. But if, if you're seeing a pediatric provider, then you need to be thinking about how do I find an adult primary care provider as my child gets older? also need to be thinking about specialty providers. And I know um, for many of the, us who, who have kids who are medically involved, this can be really scary because there aren't always adult providers who have experience in the disabilities that our kids have. Kids with disabilities are living longer and longer with rarer and rarer conditions. So it's a really important discussion to have both with your primary care provider as well as your specialty providers to find out do you feel like you can continue to provide care for my young adult? Um, and if not, who would you recommend that we talk to um, about providing care as they move into adulthood? We also talked, to, we've already talked a little bit about powers of attorney and advanced directives, so I don't think, again, this is a time to begin to have those conversations. Something else to be thinking about as you think about transition to adult health care is how is that, how is that voluminous information um, going to be shared with adult providers who've never met your young adult? So there are tools available um, called, they can be um, port port uh, portable care plans, emergency care plans, comprehensive care plans, medical summaries. These are all things that you want to talk with your primary care physician about how are we going to share information about and your specialty providers about this young adult with, um, with a new provider and what tools do they have available to them. There are also some really interesting online resources that allow um, a family member to fill out a comprehensive care plan that you could then use to transition that information. And, um, there's two resources I'd like to particularly draw your attention to. One is called My Health Pocket Guide. Both of these are resources available through the Waysen Center. Um, and this is a really nice uh, sort of step-by-step -step guide that helps a young adult become more familiar with their health care and how to communicate about it. And then the other one is called Transition Healthcare Checklist, Preparing for Life as Adult. And again, this has information about all the domains of transition, but in particular, 
um, has a, a focus on transition as it relates to health care. Um, we have hard copies available in Madison, and they um, maybe by the third session will be available at other sites as well, but we'll also provide an electronic link to these resources. Um, something else to ask your doctor about is um, what their role is in helping coordinate care and in helping transition your, your young adult's care to somebody else. Um, and some of the terminology about related to that is does your um, provider work within the, within the context of what's called a medical home? Medical home is not a place, but a way of coordinating care. And, um, or, and or is there somebody in the office that can assist with care coordination? Something else to be thinking about um, related to healthcare is the development support facilitation of self-advocacy skills as it relates to healthcare. So up until now, families may have been um, really involved in everything related to that young adult's care. But I know um, as I thought about things my son needed to be able to do, even while he was in school, it became important that he um, begin and develop the skills to communicate his needs to the adults who were helping to support him. So for example, if he um, was physically uncomfortable, if he needed assistance with incontinent care, um, if he was in pain, I had that role when he was very young, but as he started to get older and he wasn't with me all the time, he needed to develop skills on his own to communicate some of those things. So this is a really good time to begin to think about how to develop um, and support the acquisition of some of those self-advocacy skills related to health care. So for example, um, is a young adult, do they know um, what their disability is and are they able to explain that to someone? who might ask them about it. So the more people are in community settings, the more strangers may be asking questions of them. Um, can that young adult fill their own prescriptions? Um, so particularly as you think about independent living, um, when that young person is no longer living with their family, if they have a need for uh, prescription medications, are they going to know when they need to order them? Are they going to know what they are um, and how to get more? Um, as I said, expressing um, needs to direct caregivers becomes increasingly important. Um, young adults could also practice setting up appointments, um, particularly if there are appointments that are routine, um, that require uh, care on a regular basis. It might be something that they could start to practice to do at the next appointment. Another thing to be thinking about is um, our family members as well as medical professionals providing health information in, the way, in a way that young adults can understand it. At a very basic level, are medical professionals addressing young adults um, directly? So for example, at the next doctor's appointment, if you find that the doctor is always talking to the adult in the room, the parent, then the parent might say, um, you know, you could direct that question to Stephen or Jane or whoever and start to try to transition and you may have to model that for the adult provider, um, that interaction directly with the youth and then help that provider do it in a way that's understandable. Um, and some ways, to, some of, one of the ways to think about acquiring some of these skills is through, you know, role playing. So if, um, the young adult, for example, is going to make th their next appointment with the doctor on the phone. Um, maybe you could practice that ahead of time um, and um, very step by step what they need to know and how to make the phone call. If they use an augmentative communication device, you might want to program that device ahead of time so that they can try to negotiate that. And then um, let them practice. You might even let the, the person who you're calling know um, that the call is from a young adult who may have trouble communicating and to be patient um, and to wait. So thinking about some of the ways that young adults can acquire um, some of these self-advocacy skills related to their own health care can be very, very valuable.
And again, um, there are a wide variety of additional resources available to you as you start to think about this.